Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make cable stitch shorts. Spring is here, so let's celebrate with some new wearables. These shorts sport cables, alpines for texture, and a comfy breathable stitch combination perfect for lounging around in. Speaking of, if you did crocheting casual loungewear, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern casual crochet tutorials and patterns fit for every occasion with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 240 grams of yarn, and that's 450 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what game or sport you are most confident in. Outside of crochet, I'm pretty confident in my Disney trivia. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet Half double crochet Double crochet And treble crochet this tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting these shorts started, let's all start by grabbing our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making a chain that is in multiples of 4, the width of the widest part of our hips. Now I need a total of 25 inches, or 65 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 108. But since we are making a long chain, let me show you guys a quick tip just to make sure that our chain doesn't twist. So let's all start by making a chain 5. Now that we have our chain 5, we are going to pull some slack, and pull our hook out. Then we're going to insert our hook into that first chain that we made, then we're going to reinsert our slack loop onto our hook, pull, and then we're going to continue on with our chain per usual. Now I already have my chain and first row finished, so I'm just going to be doing a small sample size with you to get started. Now that we have our chain, your chain should be a little bit longer. To close off our chain, we're going to pull our first loop underneath our second loop to form a circle. So we're going to pull underneath, and now we should all have a circle chain that's not twisted. And our first row is going to be a double crochet row. So let's all chain three. Our first row is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be one double crochet into every chain. So let's all yarn over, and start by inserting our hook into that first chain, which is actually the chain that our chain three is in, since we did pull our work through. So insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first double crochet, let's do one more. Yarn over, into that following chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. From here, continue on with one double crochet into every chain. And we should all end up with the same amount of stitches as chains that we made. So now that we have made our way all the way around with our first row, we're now going to connect it. So all we're going to do is count up the first three chains that we made when we started this row. Here's one, two, three for me, and just insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, and pull through everything with a slip stitch. Now just as a really quick tip, the slip stitch that we just did to connect the beginning to the end of the row is going to look like a stitch, but it doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. So just make sure that you're not accidentally adding an extra stitch when going in with your following rows. Now we're going to get started on the ribbing of our waistband. So we're all going to start by making a chain 2, 
and we're going to start with the front post double crochet. So let's all yarn over. Find the first double crochet from our previous row and we're going to bring our hook underneath the body of that stitch. So bring your hook down, underneath the body of that double crochet and through the other side. Now we're going to yarn over, pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. There's our front post double crochet. Let's do our back post double crochet now. So yarn over, bring your hook down underneath your work, just like this. And we're going to bring our hook over that following double crochet from our previous row. So in through that gap, over the body of that double crochet and through the other gap. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two and pull through two. Now all together we should have one front post, one back post. Let's just do the next set together. Our following stitch is going to be a front post double. So yarn over, bring your hook down underneath the body of that following stitch and through the other side. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And now for a back post, yarn over, bring our hook underneath our work now, in through that next gap and over that following double crochet. Bring our hook through the other side and then pull through and double crochet per usual, so pull through two and pull through two. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our first two rows. We're now gonna connect it into the base to close off our row two. So it's gonna be done almost exactly the same as when we connected the first row. All we're gonna do is count up two chains, since we only made a chain two starting off this row, and then slip stitch into that second chain. Now from here, the waistband is just going to be an extension of our previous row stitches to get some ribbing. So let's all chain two. And we're gonna start with our front post double crochet because we are not flipping our work. So for everyone, we're gonna yarn over. Our first stitch from our previous row should be a front post double crochet. We're gonna bring our hook down underneath the body of that first front post double crochet, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. Let's do this again. Yarn over, that following stitch is a back post double crochet. So bring your hook down, underneath that stitch and through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Let's just do the next set together once more. Yarn over, underneath that following stitch, which is a front post double crochet, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And again, yarn over, underneath that following stitch, which is a back post, bring your hook down and underneath. Through the other side, pull through, pull through two and pull through two. And that's it. All we're gonna do is continue to extend our previous row stitches until we get the height of the waistband that we want. Now you can end on any number of rows. Just as a really quick tip, after we have a few of these rows finished up, the original chain will shrink in size, but just a little bit, that is natural. So as you get a few more rows in, just make sure that it still fits around the widest part of your hips, cause you are gonna need to put the shorts on. But once we have the height of the waistband that we want, do a chain up one and cut, and then I will meet you back. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up the height of my waistband. I have a total of seven rows, and this is roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters. Now from here, we're going to need to insert our stitch markers to separate our pant legs and then to do our side detail. So let's all start by separating our pant legs first. Now after our last row, we all should have done a chain up of one and cut. Now what we're gonna do is the amount of chains that we made, which should be the amount of stitches that we had for every row, we're gonna take that number and divide that by four. Then we're gonna take that sum and just insert our stitch markers, making sure that we have that sum in between our stitch markers. So for those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 108 chains. That divided by four is 27. So for everyone starting by inserting our stitch marker into the stitch that's nearest to our tail end, I'm going to count out 27 and then insert my stitch marker into that stitch. Then into the following stitch, insert another stitch marker. That's gonna be the start for this section, counting that stitch marker, another 27 for me. And then I just repeated that all the way around until I had a total of four sections on my waistband. Now this tail end is going to be the back portion that we have from here. So when your work is folded in half like this, this portion is going to be the back, and then the stitch markers directly across from it is going to be the front, and these are on the side. Now let's get started by inserting our stitch markers right where we want our side detail to be. Now since this is the back of our piece, into the following stitch marker that we have on either side, we're gonna be inserting our stitch marker into the stitches that we want from our side stitch markers, the width that we'd like for our side detail to be. Now I'd like for my total side detail to be roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. 
So for my side stitch markers, including that side stitch marker, I insert my stitch marker into the eighth stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I repeated the same thing on the other side. And there needs to be a minimum of 12 stitches. Now from this stitch marker over to this stitch mark is going to be the width of my side detail. Once we have that, repeat the same thing on the other side and then we can get started on the side detail. So now that we have separated where we want our side details to be and our pant legs, we're ready to get started on the side detail. So what we're going to do is insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch and we're going to work in between our middle detail stitch markers. We can take those two in the middle out because we actually don't need them anymore. We are now going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and start with a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, we just need the height. And now we're going to put one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our following stitch marker. So our first half double crochet is going to be worked into that same stitch that our chain two is in. So let's all yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch with a half double crochet. So pull through, pull through all three, and again, yarn over into that next stitch, insert, pull through, pull through all three, and continue this to reach the end of the row. All right, so our half double crochet row is finished. What we're gonna do from here is another half double crochet row and then we can get started on our cables. So let's all chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. So we are back. Our second half double crochet row is all finished up. So let's chain two and flip our work to get started on our row three. Now getting started on all of our cable stitch detail rows, it's always going to start with a dividing stitch and that's always going to be a front post treble crochet. So how that's going to work is we're going to yarn over twice. Every cable stitch row is going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're currently working on row three, we're gonna be inserting our hook into row one. So let's all start by finding that first half double crochet from our previous odd number row. We are not gonna be counting that chain two, so just finding that first one, we're gonna bring our hook down underneath the body of that half double crochet, through the other side, yarn over and pull through. Now from here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and that is our first front post treble crochet. Now to get started with our twist, we're all going to yarn over twice. We're gonna skip that following stitch from our row one and into the stitch right after that. We're going to insert with a front post treble crochet. So pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And we're gonna be doing another front post treble crochet into that following stitch as well. So yarn over twice, bring our hook down underneath and through the other side, pull through, pull through two, two, two. Then to get the twist, we're gonna be putting one front post treble crochet into that skip stitch. So yarn over twice. Bring our hook down underneath that skip stitch and through the other side. Pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And now on the other side of our twist, we're going to be doing a front post treble crochet just like how we started off this row. So yarn over twice. We're gonna find that following stitch. Bring our hook underneath, through the other side, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now we should all have one front post treble, our twist, and another front post treble. Now we're going to be ending the row with the same detail, but in between we're gonna be doing our alpine stitches. And that's gonna start with a half double crochet. So yarn over. Now we're going to half double crochet into the sixth stitch from our previous row because altogether we just took up a total of five stitches. So counting from our previous row, let's count out one, two, three, four, five, six and into that sixth stitch, insert with a half double. So insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Now from here, we're all gonna yarn over. We're gonna be skipping that following stitch because that half double crochet that we just did counts as that stitch, and then underneath the following with a front post double crochet. So bring your hook underneath the body of that next stitch and through the other side, we're gonna yarn over and pull through. Now to do our alpine stitch detail, we are going to pull our work nice and tall once we have these three loops on our hook to make sure that we have the same height as the rest of our row. Then from here, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And it's going to be a repeat of these two stitches, so let's do this again. Yarn over, 
Skip that following stitch because now this front post double crochet counts as that stitch. And into the stitch right after that, we're going to insert with one half double crochet. And then we're going to yarn over, preparing for front post double, skipping that following stitch from our previous row, and then into the next yarn over, pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, and pull through two. From here, we're going to continue to do our half double crochet and front post double crochet until we all have five stitches left. All right, so we are back. Our alpine stitch detail is finished. Now we should all have one, two, three, four, five stitches left from our row one. Now we're gonna close it off with our dividing stitches and our twist. So in between our twists and our alpine stitch detail is always going to be our dividing stitch, which is a front post treble. So yarn over twice. Insert your hook underneath that following stitch from our previous odd number row. We're gonna pull through, then yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. Right after that, we're gonna be doing our twist, which is gonna be done exactly the same way as the first one. So yarn over twice. We are going to skip that following stitch and then into that following stitch, insert with one front post treble. And then into the stitch right after that, another front post treble. Then a front post treble crochet worked into that stitch that we skipped. And now the last stitch for this row is going to be our dividing stitch. But since we are at the end of the row, we are going to combine that dividing stitch with a half double crochet just to secure the entire row down. So per usual, we're all gonna start with a yarn over two and find that last stitch from our previous odd number row. Bring your hook down and underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side, then yarn over and pull through. Then from here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and when we have those two loops in our hook, yarn over once, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, and now we should all have four loops on our hook. So from here, just yarn over, pull through all four, and now this row is complete. For every even number row, it is going to be a half double crochet row. So at the end of the row, just chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. We are back and our first one, two, three, four rows are finished. Now let's get started on row five, so chain two and flip. So getting our following detail row started, our dividing stitch, twist and dividing stitch is going to be the same for the beginning and the end of every row. So let's just get that started really quickly. We're all going to yarn over twice. We're going to find that first stitch from our previous row, making sure that we're not working into that chain two and insert with our dividing stitch, which is a front post treble crochet. And then we're going to do our twist. So yarn over twice again. We're going to skip that first stitch from our previous cable stitch row. And then underneath that following stitch, insert with one front post treble. And then underneath that following, insert with a another front post treble. And now to do the twist, one front post treble into the stitch that we skipped. And then to finish this off, one front post treble crochet into the dividing stitch. And now that we have our twist finished, we're gonna get started with our alpine stitch detail. So when it comes to doing any alpine stitch detail from here on out, each of our stitches needs to be staggered from our previous alpine stitch detail. So since that first stitch from our previous alpine stitch detail was a half double crochet, we're now gonna be inserting it into there with a front post double crochet. So yarn over, underneath that half double crochet, bring our hook through the other side, pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, and pull through two. And now, since our following stitch is a front post double crochet, we're gonna insert into the top of that following stitch with a half double crochet. And we are gonna be skipping our first six stitches because we just took up a total of six stitches here. So yarn over and count out seven from our previous row. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Into that seventh stitch, insert with a half double crochet. And just to do the next set, we're all gonna yarn over Find that following stitch, which should be a half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch detail. Bring your hook down underneath that stitch and through the other side, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna continue this until we're ready to do our cable stitch detail again. And now that we have made our way down, let's finish this up with our twist. So it's all gonna start with our dividing stitch, which is a front post treble crochet. Next is our actual twist, so yarn over twice. Skip that following stitch and underneath the following with one front post treble. 
into that following with another front post treble, and then into that skip stitch, another front post treble. Then to close off this row, it's going to be one front post treble combined with a half double, so yarn over twice. Insert your hook into that last stitch from our previous cable stitch row, pull through, and we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. When we have those two loops left on our hook, we're going to find that last stitch from our previous row, insert our hook in through there, and now our row five is complete. Now, like I said, every even number row is a half double crochet row. So from here, chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. All right, so we are back. We should all have one, two, three, four, five, six rows finished. Now from here, it's going to be repeat of rows three through six until we get the length of the shorts that we want. So let's just get started on the following row. So chain two and flip your work. So the dividing stitches and our twists are going to be the same for every row. So yarn over twice. Find that first stitch from our previous cable stitch row and insert with one front post treble. And then to do our twist, yarn over twice, skip that first stitch underneath the following, insert with one front post treble, and then one front post treble into that following stitch as well. Then when we have those two, one front post treble crochet into that skipped stitch. And then our dividing stitch, which is always a front post treble crochet. Now since we're working on row seven, it is going to be a repeat of row three. So our row three's alpine stitch detail started with a half double crochet. So we're all going to yarn over and count out six stitches. We're skipping the first five because we just took up five stitches with our twist and dividing stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and then into the six with one half double crochet, front post double crochet, into the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch detail, and that's it. We are going to continue to repeat these two rows until we get the length of the shorts that we want making sure that we all end right after a cable stitch row. When we have that finished up, I will meet you back and then we can get started on filling in the shorts. Alrighty, so we are back. I have just finished up the length of my cable stitch detail. I have a total of 33 rows and my length for just the cable stitch detail is roughly 11 inches or 28 centimeters or my total length, which is including my band, is roughly 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to get started on our pant leg filling in one side. So since we all should have ended right after a cable stitch row, we're all going to chain one and flip our work to work down the sides of our cable stitch detail. So starting our pant leg, we're all gonna do a single crochet row, alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. So just to do the first one, this is my first side row right here. We may need to pull it apart just a little bit. We're going to insert with one single crochet. This is my following side row. So insert into there with two single crochets. There's one, and then there's two. Let's do that again. Into that following side row, insert with one single crochet, and then into that following side row, insert with two single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. So we've made our way all the way down with our single crochet row. Now for the single crochet row, we do want to make sure that it ends on an even number of stitches. So if you are like me and you actually end on an odd number, we're going to be adding one extra single crochet into that last side row. But if you already have an even number, you guys are good to go. So for those of you with an odd number like me, just put one extra single crochet into that last side row and now we all can connect it into the base. Now the base is the bottom of our waistband, so all we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, which this is mine right here. And all I'm gonna do is insert my hook into that next stitch with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect our first row to the base. And now our row one is complete. Now the row sequence for our pant legs is going to be a single crochet and two moss stitch rows. So let's work our way up to the following moss stitch row. We're just going to be slip stitching into that following stitch into the base, that slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. Now whenever we're along the base, working our way out towards the outside to get started on our moss stitch row, we're going to chain one, skip that first stitch, and then single crochet into the following. So remember we're not counting those two slip stitches into the base as a stitch. We're all going to find that last single crochet from our previous row, 
that is the first stitch. We're going to skip that first stitch and then into that following stitch, insert with a single crochet. And that forms our first chain space and our first single crochet. So we should all have two stitches so far for our second pant leg row. Again, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch into that following with a single crochet. Now we should have one chain space, a single crochet, a second chain space, and another single crochet for a total of one, two, three, four stitches so far. From here, continue to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into that following, making our way down to the end of the row. And the last stitch that we should have in this row should be a single crochet, since our previous row ended on an even number of stitches. So our second pant leg row is all finished up, and that was a moss stitch row. Now we're going to do a second moss stitch row. So at the end of this row, we're all going to chain one. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. Then we're going to chain a second chain. That's going to count as a chain, and we're all going to flip our work. From here, let's get started on our second moss stitch row, or our third pant leg row. So just like the beginning of our previous row, we're going to skip that first stitch, which should be the single crochet from our previous row. And then into that following stitch, insert with a single crochet, and that should be our chain space. So together we just chain two, we're going to skip one, into the following, insert with a single crochet, and it might be a little bit hard to see, but we should all have our first chain space, and then a single crochet for a total of two stitches so far for this row. Again, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, which should be that single crochet from our previous row, and then into that following, which should be our chain space. We're just going to insert our hook into that entire chain space with one single crochet. So all together we should have our first chain space, our first single crochet, our second chain space, and our second single crochet for a total of four stitches so far. We're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet into the following until we make our way down to the end of the row. We are back in our first one, two, three rows are nearly finished for our pant leg. Now we're just going to connect it into the base. And connecting it into the base should be done the same exact way as our previous rows. So all we're going to do is find that following stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there just to connect this odd number row, and then to work our way up to the following row, which now is our single crochet row, because our row sequence is one single crochet, two moss stitch rows. So just slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, and flip our work. Now just like before, none of those slip stitches count as a stitch. So just to get started on our following row, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, which is the top of that single crochet, and insert with one single, and continue with just one single crochet into every stitch and chain space to reach the end of the row. And just as a really quick tip, so far we should all have the same amount of stitches per row. All right, so now our first one, two, three, four rows are finished, and our following two rows are going to be two moss stitch rows. They aren't gonna have any increases or decreases, so let's just get them started and I'll let you finish up the rest on your own. So whenever along the outer edge are ready to get started on our moss stitch row, we're always going to start it with a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain and flip our work. Now from here, we're going to skip that first stitch into the following with our first single crochet for our chain space and single crochet. From here, chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into every stitch to reach the end of the row. We've made our way up with our moss stitch row. Let's connect it into the base, which is done exactly the same way as all of our other rows. So just find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, and flip our work. So like I said, whenever we're along the base and working our way out towards the outer edge with our moss stitch row, we're always going to start the row with a chain one, so we can skip that first stitch. That first stitch should be a single crochet from our previous row. And then into that following stitch, insert with a single crochet, and continue this to reach the end of the row. From here, it's going to be a repeat of these three rows until we reach our stitch marker stitch. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and I will meet you back. So I am finished with one side of my pant leg. The entire pant leg isn't finished because we need to repeat this on this side, so let's get that started. So because we want the other side to look like the side that we just started, we're now going to be inserting our hook into that next available stitch into the base instead of into the bottom corner because we want the first single crochet row to show the front of it instead of the back. So all we're going to do is find that next available stitch, which is this one right here. I'm going to insert my hook. Then we're going to do our single crochet row 
alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. And if you're like me, you needed to add one extra single crochet into that first side row to get an even number of stitches, add one extra single crochet if you guys need to. Then it's going to be a repeat of our single crochet and two moss stitch rows until we reach our stitch marker again. So everything else is going to be pretty much done the same way. We're just inserting our hook into a different spot. Once we reach our following stitch marker stitch, I will meet you back. All right, so we're back and we have just finished up the second side of one of our pant legs. And now we are all finished up with one of our pant legs. Now from here, we're going to repeat the same exact thing that we did here on the other side. Once we have this second side finished up, I'll meet you back so you can work on the inner thigh portion. All right, so we are back. Now that we have both of our pant legs all finished up, we're now ready to get started on the inner thigh portion. So what we're going to want to do is lay our work flat, making sure that our pant looks like how it would be as if it was all seamed up. So each pant leg should be folded in half. So getting started on our inner thigh portion, we're all going to need to insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch from the bottom right where we want the connector to be. So how we're going to do that is try on our piece, making sure that the waistband is going to be where you want to wear it when it's on. And then we're just going to insert our stitch marker where we want our piece to connect. So for those of you that want my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch from the bottom. That's roughly two inches or five centimeters. And now from here, we're just going to do our single crochet and two moss stitch rows, making sure that this can reach our inner thigh and then reach the back half of this pant leg. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our pant leg. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch marker. So inserting my hook into that same corner stitch that our chain one is in, because that chain one does not count as a stitch, I'm gonna insert with a single into that following, working our way up with another single. Continue this until we reach our stitch marker, making sure that we're working into that stitch marker stitch for an even number of stitches. So I've just finished up my first single crochet row for my inner thigh connector, and all I'm gonna do from here is my two moss stitch rows. So we're going to chain two because we're starting off our moss stitch row together. Flip our work, and we should all already know how to do our moss stitch row, so we're gonna skip that first stitch into the following with a single crochet skip that next stitch into the following with another single crochet. And that is basically it. At the end of this row, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and then do our next moss stitch row, and then continue to repeat our one single crochet and two moss stitch row row sequence. We're gonna continue that until we have an inner thigh portion that can reach around the inner thigh to the back side of this pant leg. And we all need to make sure that we end right after an even number row, so that means along the bottom. And then I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. All right, so we are back with our inner thigh portion. Now, from our first single crochet row that we did together, I have a total of 14 rows. This width is roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. And now we're going to seam it to the other side of our pant leg. So let's all start by flipping our work wrong side out. So we have flipped our work wrong side out, meaning the cable stitch detail is now along the inside and we have inserted our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So let's pull our work through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're just going to do a single crochet row working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel. Go ahead and insert your hook. First stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. Let's do this again. First stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single. And that's it. We're gonna continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So our inner thigh portion is all seamed up. Now we're ready to get started on the bottom portion of our shorts just to clean it up. So let's all start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out now, and we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our pant leg. Then we're gonna start with a single crochet row. So let's all start by inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through with a chain up of one to secure. And all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every stitch and side row, making our way all the way around. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. Just gonna find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. Let's do this again. Into our following side row, this is mine right here. 
insert into that top loop with a single crochet and that's basically it just continue with our single crochet row all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space we are back and our single crochet row is finished our following row for the bottom of our piece is going to be a half double crochet row so right after we slip stitched into that chain space all we're going to do is chain two and put one half double crochet into every stitch and make your way all the way around all right so our half double crochet row is all finished up and we're going to finish up the bottom with just one front and back post double crochet row just to have some matching ribbing for the waistband so right after we have closed off our half double crochet row let's all chain two so just to do our front and back post double crochets together we're all going to yarn over find the first half double crochet from our previous row not that chain two insert your hook underneath the body of that stitch pull through pull through two pull through two and then a back post double crochet so yarn over bring your hook underneath our work over that following body through the other side pull through pull through two and pull through two and that's basically it we're going to continue to do our front and back post double crochets all the way around when we don't have any more stitches left to work into slip stitch into that second chain that we made and then do a chain up of one and cut all right so i'm back and i've just finished up the bottom of my shorts now once we have this one all finished up i went ahead and repeated everything so the inner thigh and the bottom border for the other side as well once we have both of them all finished up we're now ready to seam everything together so when we have both finished up go ahead and flip your work wrong side out so our work is flipped wrong side out and now we're going to seam it all together so we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the two stitch marker stitches that we have into the bottom of our waistband or if you took yours out then it's just going to be the first stitch that we have on this side of our pant leg and the first available stitch that we have on this side of our pant leg then all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and do a chain up of one to secure and now we're going to do a single crochet seam so just to do the first one we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel insert first stitch into the back panel insert and single crochet and we're going to continue this making our way all the way down until we reach the side rows that we have right where our inner thigh is all right so we are back we have just made our way all the way down the first portion of our seam and now we have reached right where our inner thigh connectors are now from here we're going to continue on with our single crochet row but now we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every side row working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time so making sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out what we're going to do is take our two inner thigh connectors and we're just going to purse them together like this to make sure that the seam stays along the inside and all we're going to do is find that first side row within the front panel this is my inner thigh for my front panel right here i'm going to find that first side row which this is mine for me and then within the back panel i'm going to find that first side row there insert my hook in through there and one single crochet let's do this again into my front panel let's find our next side row this is mine so i'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook and then find the next side row within the back panel this is mine right here find that top loop and insert with another single crochet and we're just going to continue this working our way across our inner thigh portion and then we're going to have the rest of our seam to do which is going to be regular stitches so just single crochet seam all the way up well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into do a chain up of one and cut all right so everything is all seamed up and the last thing that we're going to have to do is make a chain that is long enough to act as our drawstring so all i did was made a really long chain plus added some extra inches so that we have some extra slack to use as a tie so i made a chain of 200 chains did a chain up one and cut and now we're just going to weave it into the waistband together so this is going to be pretty simple we're, we're just going to figure out where we want our drawstring to be whether if it's along the top in the middle or the bottom i'd like for mine to be within the middle so i'm just going to insert my hook underneath these post stitches until i reach the middle and that's going to be easy to find because we have a middle seam right over here once my hook is underneath those post stitches i'm going to insert my chain onto my hook and i'm just going to pull that through so go ahead and just wiggle it on through pull through and we're just going to continue to pull our chain all the way through until i reach this other post stitch on the other side 
All right, so I am back and I have just finished up weaving in my drawstring and we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye.